never could never be long enough for me to feel like I've had long enough with you. Forget the world now, we won't let them see. There's one thing left to do. Now that the wait is over, love's finally shown her my way. Marry me today and every. Get the nerve to say hello in this cafe. Say you will. Mm. Mm. So Shane and Teresa, we're going to begin our ceremony with some Hawaiian flavor with we'll Walter shell. And in our islands, before any sacred event. We sound the shell to beseech or to propitiate the blessings and presence of God. We always blow it three times. The first two sounds are short. The third is long and sustained. And the long tone symbolizes long life and long relationships. So we'll give it all we've got on the third one. And the Hawaiians used to say that if we can blow an inhumanly long note, they would say that God was indicating his presence and approval with extra breath. In fact, the word aloha, you've heard aloha. Ha means breath. And in the Christian tradition, we talk about the breath of life. So exhale on the third and see if it uh, seems beyond human, okay? Oh, by the way, especially for Shane, a, a conch shell is considered a legal horn on a vessel by the U.S. Coast Guard. If you can blow it, it counts as that horn you have to have. Okay. So Therese and Shane, we are standing together this beautiful afternoon here in the Hawaiian Islands on the 24th day of March, the year 2018, and we're a world away from the Sunshine State. We've traveled about 5,000 miles. 4,273, Yeah. We've covered, yeah, about, you know, more or less 2,500 miles across the continental U.S. and another 2,500 miles across the Pacific, which has geographically brought you to the most isolated place on Earth. Even though it's the most isolated, it's probably the most heavenly. And here we are in a beautiful botanical garden with cascading waterfalls and flowing fountains and botanicals of every imaginable variety. And in this beautiful place in paradise, we're now going to perform a sacred ceremony of matrimony where the two of you are going to join heart and soul in the most cherished relationship of husband and wife. And what you've been sharing now for a little over a year, love, amorous love. It's what makes life worth living. I mean, face it, we're all about love. We may not recall, but when we first came in the world, with our first breath, where's love? And for a fortunate mommy standing by, one taste of that love of mommy, we know at that moment that this is what I really am. I'm all about love. 
Then our life becomes a journey to taste the infinite varieties of love. Because it comes in so many flavors. Mommy, daddy, brothers, sisters, grandma, grandpa, friends. Sometimes we even experience love crossing the boundaries of species. If you ever had a family dog or kitty, they can be undeniable partners in love. And I would say a young child smothered in a healthy family is completely satisfying. If there's a juncture we all reach, help me out here, Shane, somewhere, where we, somewhere between when we were boys and men, this very odd thought comes into our mind, where's the love of my life to protect, to provide for and cherish? Now, Shane, I think the, the gals are way ahead of us. Isn't it true, Teresa, that long before womanhood en enriches the life of a woman, she's already starting to contemplate, where the heck is Prince Charming? And when will he be arriving in his white ship to take me away? But the, the bottom line, if we're fortunate enough to find that amorous love in life, then you know, what more does this world have to offer? Is there anything we could offer you today to have you go your separate ways? One of those lottery tickets where they, some of them end up over a billion dollars. Take it? Yeah. Nothing. You've got the greatest treasure of all. And what we want to talk about today is the reality of never losing what you've got. Because you've got the most precious gem of all. So let's think kind of nautically here, if that's okay, since we've got a master captain with us who outranks me. You are, let's think of this marriage as embarking upon the vessel of marriage. And the two of you as co-captains are gonna pilot that ship into the most celestial sea of all, sea of love. Of course, if I can back up, maybe I shouldn't say co-captains because generally we got one captain and obviously that's Shane, he's the, he's the guy, he's a licensed captain. But standing next to him is the Admiral, who outranks the captain. Now, the, ca the captain wears the pants in the family, but the Admiral always tells him what pants to wear, when to put them on, when to take them off, and, I mean, we got to get the protocol down if we're going to have a happy journey out there. And I think Shane's already figured out who the Admiral is, or we wouldn't be standing here today. In fact, the mantra that we're going to give you today is happy wife, happy life. Anyway, so you're going to be sailing this vessel of marriage in that sea of love. But one, one thing they always kind of talk about in weddings are good times and bad times and sickness and health and for rich and for poor, for better, for worse. Which translate nautically to storms at sea. And it's, now in a year, I'd imagine at least you hit a squall, something, right? Yeah. But your love has sustained you and kept you together. But sometimes when good times, bad times kick in, which is what they're really talking about, is well, one thing that I've learned as a mariner is that I've got pretty good sea legs. But you put me in a bad enough storm, I'm not down there in the galley looking for chow, right? We kind of lose that feeling in the fury of a storm, and we've just got to all hands on deck, batten down the hatches, hold fast to the helm, and do the needful. And that's really what we're talking about today, is that when the storms hit, and they will, most important instruction is never jump ship. Because the reality is, in the fury of storms, the vast majority of mariners in the sea of love will jump ship. I mean, look at it statistically. They get seasick, and they and one thing you know an interesting thing about seasickness, if you jump off the ship and you go into the water, you're going to lose your seasickness. But what happens is, 
you're exposed to the sharks, right? So they may lose the seasickness, but they get gobbled up by the sharks of loneliness and despair. And another thing we say in the world of mariners, I know Shane knows this, is that smooth seas do not make seas of sailors. A sailor earns his stripes by weathering out storms. That's what makes us strong. So when that, we get past that storm, we're that much more seasoned of sailors. And that's where the love really, really grows. Because, you know, love, unlike anything else in life, is the one thing that can get sweeter and sweeter and more and more delicious. And we cannot say that about anything else in life. But we've got to be willing to weather the storms. And that's what our commitments are all about. So if today you're willing to make that the ultimate promise, that even if that storm hits, and even if you're feeling seasick and you feel like abandoning ship, you're on board. You're going to come together as a team, weather out that storm. And if that's your purpose, we can assure you both, as incredibly sweet as your love is, it's just the beginning compared to an ocean of love that is awaiting as your love matures. So honey, I'll take your bouquet. And Shane, you've got something special to share? As you know, on the way here, I deleted every entire word and the vowels I wrote. So I'm gonna wing it. My Teresa, my beautiful. Throughout the years, the both of us have realized that if a single individual can find one person to hold, another person can find somebody to love. You might even find somebody that would listen to stories over and over, even if it's the same story, and never say a word. You also find people that don't mind snuggling at night, cold feet, cold butts. But the problem with it is, is I guess the journey is to find that person that's willing to do all of it. And I found that in you. No matter what, I know that if I fall, you're going to be there. As I will with you. So I, I tell you right now, I'll never leave your side. I'll weather every storm. This wedding ring symbolizes, symbolizes my unconditional commitment. My unconditional commitment to you. To you. Teresa, honey, you also prepared some special words. So I'll write mine down. I can't wing it. All my life, I've dreamed of someone like you. Someone who loves and respects and honors me, just as you do. You made me my dreams come true today, you swipe right. Shane, with my whole heart, I take you as my husband. Acknowledging and accepting your faults and strengths as you do mine. I promise to be your loving, devoted wife. To be faithful to you, I will be supportive and push you beyond your own barriers. Because I believe in you. You know your capabilities. And you can go so far beyond your own limitations. I promise to be your rock that you will need. I will be there to support you. If you shall stumble. And if ever you fall. I promise to be with the one to help you get back up on your feet, telling you to do it again. I will dream with you. I will celebrate with you. 
I will walk beside you with anything life has to offer. As days go on and we begin to feel weary and tired, I will still be there holding your hand, just as I have from the moment we met in every day since. From this day forward, you shall not walk alone. My heart will be your shelter. My arms will be your home. You are my best friend, my love, my life, my forever. Would you also say the sweating rain? For this sweating rain? I pledge. I pledge. My unconditional commitment. My unconditional commitment. To you. The Hawaiians expressed their love with gifts, but they didn't have uh, Kmart to go to or Walmart. So they would go to the forest and to the seashore. And this lay here is, these are puka shells, which are, there must be a thousand of them here. And they're all strung together. And, um, like you get from the ocean. So, Shane, you're going to give this lay to Teresa, and she always gets a little kiss with it. Both of these lays can be kept forever. This is a kukui nut lay. This is from the kukui nut tree which is also called the candle nut tree. The Hawaiians used to burn these for light at night. Really? And honey, you're going to give this to Sean. This is Hawaiian sand, right from Angel's Bay. You could throw a stone from here to Angel's Bay. And we're going to pour your sand in and it all becomes one as the two of you put your hearts together and your hearts become one. You drop those little bags right inside. So at this time, Sean, Jane and Teresa, it is our great pleasure and honor with the blessings of all of your family and friends and well-wishers. We now pronounce you as husband and wife, Shane, and we kiss your beautiful bride. Aloha! Promise me will always be Happy by my side. I promise to. Congratulations, honey. Thank you. Mm. It's your flower, sweetheart. Congratulations, Captain. Mm. Thank you. Hello in this cafe. Say you will. Can never be close enough for me to feel like I am close oh, enough to you. You were wild and now we're out the world. I love you. And you're beautiful. Now that the weight has lifted. Love is surely shifts in my way. Marry me today and every day. Marry me if I ever get the nerve to say hello in this cafe. Say you will.
baby. 